Praise the Lord. Shalom, shalom. My name is Charlie G. This is Lesson Today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I know and I do believe that you're going to be blessed by today's sharing. Today I'm going to share about identity in encounter. Identity in encounter. There's nothing as good as each and every one of us having our identity, uh, having our identity after having an encounter with God. And so, you see, uh, for each and every one of us, once we get to encounter God, then we shall be able to live a life of knowing whom we believed in. For I am persuaded, for my poor rights and poor rights and say that I, I know whom I believed in. I know whom I have believed in. And nothing as good as each and every one of us reaching to that level that you know whom you have believed in, that you know whom you are serving, that you know who has called you, that you know, and you know, that you know. And so it's, it's going to be a, a beautiful sharing. And I know and I do believe that each and every one of us are going to be blessed. I don't know if you have ever gone for a mission. Uh, if, if you've never gone for a mission, then the life of Christianity won't be exciting for you. You see, it's, all, it's, usually, uh, it's usually when we decide, or it's usually when we go out there and, and get to share the gospel with people, get to share the gospel with people, get to pray for the sick, get to cast out demons, that's when you get to realize that salvation and Christianity, salvation and Christianity is all exciting. But if you live your life of not making use of these opportunities, like for me, most people in campus, most people in high school, in high school, uh, in high school, I used to go for CU rallies, um, CU rallies and CU camps in campus. I used to go for mission. And so it's usually a beautiful thing. It's usually a wonderful thing in that I encourage any one of us, even in your home church, when you are hearing that they are having a mission, when you are even hearing that they are having a crusade, anything that's outdoor, just volunteer yourself, just avail yourself, go out there. It's not, it's not, it's not, sometimes people usually think that it's all about knowing the Bible from cover to cover. No, it's all about you knowing your God. Uh, Daniel writes in, in the book of Daniel, it says that, and those of whom know their God, not know the Bible, know their God. And so it's usually a beautiful thing once we get to encounter God. And we shall always get to encounter God once you go out there, once you decide to reach out to people, once you decide to get out from your comfort com comfortable zone. Then that's where you're going to be able to encounter God. So let us pray. Almighty and ever living Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm grateful for this wonderful privilege that you grant unto me, O God, your servant, O God, to free from sharing your word, O God. And dearly Father, I, and dearly Father, I make myself a vessel of honor, O God, for dearly Father, I desire to be used of, to be used by you, O God, in, in uh, to be used by you, O God, in your kingdom, O God. Thank you, dearly Father, for slice of today, O God. Thank you, dearly Father, for the way it has been a blessing to many people, O God. And dearly Father, knowing that you believe, O God, it's going to be a blessing, O God, to many more people, O God, for a glory and honor be name. As I'm going to share a word about, um, about identity in encounter of God, and knowing that you will reach any one of us are going to be edified by your word, O God. Let your word be seeds in our hearts and be a fruit in our life. And this is a prayer of faith we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. So I hope that you are having your Bible with you. So turn with me. Um, the person of encounter in the book of Acts, Paul. Paul talks about the God whom he encountered on his way to Damascus. And so in the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 21, Acts 26, 21. Yeah, sorry, Acts, Acts 26, 12, say that on, on one of these days, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission. You see, Paul, uh, Paul was going with authority that he, has, he had gotten from the high priest. He was going with authority that he had, he had been given by the high priest. And the same thing to each and every one of us in that our Lord Jesus Christ is the great, uh, uh, Lord Jesus Christ is our high priest. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our high priest. And so that is the same way like Paul was given authority and commission by the chief priest. Jesus Christ, uh, sorry, uh, uh, not Jesus Christ, sorry for that. Uh, Paul, in, here in book of Acts 26, verse 12, say that on, this, uh, on one of these days I was going to Damascus with authority and commission of the chief priest. And so he was going with authority and commission given by the chief priest. For each and every one of us, we ought to go. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave unto us power and authority. And who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is our great high priest. 
They're the same way about Paul. Paul was given the right instruction by chief priest. For us, we are having the high priest. And so it's for each and every one of us in time, in to, to go to cities, go to go to neighborhoods, to go to countries because of the commission that we are given by our high priest. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the high priest. For each and every one of us, we become part of the new covenant. We become part of the new covenant, which is on better terms, which is on better terms. In the better terms, you see in the old in the old covenant, it was a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye. When you do good, you'll be blessed. When you do bad, you'll be cursed. But for each and every one of us, in that we are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. <laughs> And so let each and every one of us know that. Let each and every one of us live a life of knowing that you have been given power and authority. Authority, uh, authority in that we were deputized. Um, uh, Bill Johnson, Bill Johnson surely says that we were we received. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ de deputized us. Jesus Christ deputized us in that He gave unto us power and authority. Power and authority. And just on uh, and just the other day on their service on Sunday, I was listening to Bill Johnson and then he was sharing about authority. Authority is like it is like having a key. And so whenever we are having authority and that's like having a key we can open a door and then we can go in and then we can close the door so that the enemy cannot get in and sometimes and then he was sharing said telling and uh, you're sharing telling each and every one of us uh, in that we are the ones who have allowed the enemy to come in, to come inside because we left the door unlocked because we left the door unlocked, because we are not, we are, because we are, we are not using the authority which was given to us. And so I pray to each and every one of us, let us use the authority that was given to us, that we found locking the door that need to be locked, opening the door that need to be opened, in that let us be found living a life of using, knowing that we are deputized. And, and, and our Lord Jesus Christ is a great high priest. Jesus Christ being the great high priest has given unto us power and authority. And that Jesus Christ said that, um, in Jesus Christ said that the same, uh, in that Jesus Christ, he, he also had the power and authority. And also he gave it to us. And so everything that our Lord Jesus Christ did here on us, so that also as we are able to do it because we also, because he deputized us. There's nothing as good as being deputized. Being deputized means that you have been left here on charge. We are left here on earth to be on charge. We are left here on earth to be on charge. And so since we are here, let us be found being on charge. Let us be found exercising this authority and this power that, be, that was given to us. Paul was given by the chief priest. But for us, he's coming from the high priest. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on, 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 on the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground and a higher voice saying to me in Aramic, uh, he, uh, Paul, Paul had a voice uh, speaking to him in Aramic. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in that they know all language. And so he has all, he has all had our Lord Jesus Christ speaking to him in Aramic. That is simply teaching every one of us. In that I've had the testimony of how people went to minister the gospel into foreign lands, into foreign people, and then but because of the gift of speaking in tongues of men. Speaking and uh, speaking with tongues of men, they are, with the gift of speaking with tongues, speaking with tongues of men or an angel. They say they are speaking with tongues of men, and so they, when they go at the, at the pulpit sharing the gospel, in that the Lord granted unto them utterance, and the Holy Spirit of God granted unto us at utterance according to the way He desired. And so the minister was just sharing, 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 and then speaking their language. Then everyone else would be like, uh, would be like, uh, would, would marvel. Everyone would be surprised in that. This, this person is speaking with the language. This person is speaking with the language and is speaking accurately. In that he is sometimes the uh, sometimes about the the gift of speaking with tongues is sometimes usually an ancient language. Usually an ancient language that was forgotten. You see the thing about language in that it it tends to change with time. It tends to change with time. Another thing that we can see of it in in uh, in Sheng in Sheng language in Sheng language in that you can find a, a particular. A particular uh, in, in Swahili, uh, we are talking, we are used to, we are told about Ma Mahudui. Uh, I've forgotten all those terms, Kilante, Lakia, Zinta, Kalimaka. And, and, and now, uh, it, it usually depending upon the geographical place, the people, the people who you are speaking with in that the Sheng, the Sheng language. And so, that, and so sometimes the Holy Spirit of God shall grant unto us the utterance of men in that the utterance of men to speak ancient language someone who's ancient will be like wow you're speaking of the ancient language that was that has been forgotten but you're speaking deep mysteries to them and so here we are seeing our lord jesus christ appear to saul and you're speaking to him in aramic you're speaking to him in aramic saul saul why do you persecute me and then and, and then here you see each and every time that you see the church the church is a body of christ and so each and every time that you go to church each and every time that you church only say that i've gone to christ i am in christ i am in jesus i've gone to jesus so uh, because our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Saul, not telling, not asking Saul, 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 why is, are you persecuting the church? Why are you persecuting the believers? Why are you persecuting? But Jesus Christ is like, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
and so that as the adding to each and every one of us let us let us not be found pointing fingers to the men of god to the women of god to the child let us not point finger because we serve a god who's able to see we serve a god who's able to defend his own name and so and, and so vengeance belongs to the lord so let us never be found taking upon ourselves to judge people to question people to say to tell people they're not doing the right thing in that let god be god in the bible read about the sons of the sons of Eli, phineas and his brother Finesse and the brother in that they used to sleep with women, they used to take the best sacrifice that was offered to the Lord, and then people were still going and offering, people were still going and giving offering and giving tithing and giving whatever they, they were supposed to give. In that they never, they never allowed, they never allowed whatever the sons of Eli were doing to keep them from worshiping, to keep them from offering. That's the same thing to each and every one of us, in that don't allow any man. To keep you from serving God, to keep you from worshiping God. If you're having a problem in that church, just move, go to another church, go to another fellowship, go to another place of worship so that you can continue on living a life of being connected to God. Because our God is a God who sees, our God is a God who has hands, our God is a God who has ears, our God is a God who has eyes, our God is a God who will, who, who will always be found defending himself. And so, yeah, and so yeah, in a time that uh, yeah, the church is, uh, the church is uh, about to go back to uh, the normal fellowship, and so it's my prayer and my heart desire in that. Uh, Maybe you maybe surely go to a church that, that maybe the 100 people have already been sorted out, have already been found. In that you can go to another church that hasn't, that hasn't reached them, them people 100. You can go fellowship together with them. In that don't allow anything to keep you from the fellowship of brethren. And the Bible talks about don't forsake, your, don't forsake the assembly of brethren as some are in the habit of doing. So here you're seeing Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Just guys know me. So here I say that it's hard for you to kick against the gods. It's hard for you to kick against the God. You can never do anything against the truth but for the truth. You can never do anything against the truth but for the truth. In that, it's hard to kick against the gods. And that it's for, it's for each and every one of us to live a life of knowing that, of knowing that true, true, true will always win. Light will always win. True will always win. Light will always win. Right will always win. In that don't live a life of thinking that when you do evil, when you live in darkness, that you know it. The light will always win against darkness. Truth will always win against lies. Right will always win against what's wrong. In that let us live a life of knowing that light wins. Light wins. Right, light, the truth, always win. Then I ask, who are you, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. And so whatever was happening to the believer, our Lord Jesus Christ is here telling Saul, it's me you're persecuting, it's me you're coming again, it's, it's me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, one time round, the disciples came to our Lord Jesus Christ telling Jesus Christ, we found people who are using your name to cast out demons to heal the sick. Jesus Christ said that, Jesus Christ said that if they're not against us, they're for us. In that they were gathering together with him. They're not scattering, they're gathering together with him. So that is the same thing to each and one of us. Let us always realize that whatever we are doing if, uh, in that Every believer is a child of God. Every believer is a child of God. And so whatever you do against a child of God, you're doing it against God. And so, you, you, and so that's, a, that's a fight for you not to pick. Don't pick such a fight. Don't pick for such a fight. Just speak peace to people. Just speak life to people. Always remember. Sometimes maybe you, you, can, you can, maybe someone is a small, someone doesn't have power, and then you're there speaking against them. The anointing that is upon them is what is going to come against you. It's not them that will come against you, but the anointing that's upon them is what will come against you. The Lord replied, now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you. I have appeared to you to appoint you. And so we all, uh, and so we all know about appoint. Um, the, uh, the other time I shared about anointed, appointed. And so here our Lord Jesus Christ in that appears to, appears to Saul, telling Saul that I am here to appoint you. I'm here in that I have, I have found you. I have chosen you. I have found you. I have chosen you. You see, the anointing always come after you have been appointed. Anointing surely come after you have been appointed. Appear to you to appoint you as a servant, as a witness of what you have, you have seen and will see of me. So encounter. Encounter is very important. Encounter is very important. Especially when you encounter Jehovah Rapha. When you encounter Jehovah Jireh. When you encounter Ebenezer. When you encounter God by the name that he is known to be God, then you can be able to release that same grace to another person. If you encounter Jehovah Rapha, then you shall be able to lay your, your hands on the sick and they shall receive their healing. If you encounter Jehovah Jireh, then you shall be able to pray for someone to receive their, to receive their pro, uh, provi, uh, provision because you encounter God. The God that we encounter is the God that we shall be able to represent him and present him to people. So here our Lord Jesus Christ is telling, uh, telling Saul that, 
uh, witness of what you have seen and you will see witness of what you're seeing encounter what you've seen and what you will see in that it continue on getting better and better better I will rescue you from from your own people and from the Gentiles I'm sending you to to open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light and so you are seeing that people who are, who are not born again are living in darkness and so for each and every one of us to go out there and turn them from living a life in darkness and living a, and and to be found living a life in the light and from the power of Satan to God. So they're living under this power of Satan. That's why they're living in oppression, living in sickness, living in bitterness, living in uh, pain, living in um, misery, living in puberty. That's the power under Kalima, Satan, to God. So that they may receive forgiveness of sin and, and a place among those who are being sanctified by faith in him. So we get to be sanctified by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's why to each and every one of us, maybe you are struggling with a particular addiction. Maybe you are struggling with a particular kind of thought. Maybe you are struggling with a particular kind of feeling. In that the word of the Lord is very important. In that we get to be satisfied. Your thoughts shall be satisfied. Your feelings shall be sanctified. In that we shall be able to have a pure feeling. If you are able to have pure thoughts. It usually comes by the word of God, which is able to wash us. Which is able to wash us. So, yeah, and so I hope that we are seeing of how... The God of encounter, the God of encounter that appeared to appear to Saul. And so Saul now was before King Agrippa, telling Agrippa of the God whom he had encountered. He was telling him of the God whom he had encountered. And then later on tells him of how he Ananias came, lay, laid his hands on him. Uh, of how Ananias came, laid his hands on him, then he was able to see. So verse 19 says that so then King Agrippa. I was not dishonest to the to the vision from heaven. So to each and every one of us, obey the vision of heaven. There are many people who are living a life of being disobedient to the vision of heaven. Being disobedient to the things of heaven. That's why you surely pray that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as day in the heaven. And so everything that you've seen of heaven, we ought to bring it here on earth. Everything that you've seen of heaven, we ought to bring it here on earth. First to, the, to, to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preach that they should repent and turn to God and, and demonstrate their repentance by deeds. We, respond, we demonstrate our repentance, our repentance by our deeds. Then verse 24. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. And that's why Paul Rice say that if if we if we if we are insane, it's for God's sake. If you are sane, it's for your sake. If you are insane, it's for God's sake. If we are sane, it's for your sake, for the sake of men. And that's the same thing to each and every one of us. We ought to live a life of being crazy for Jesus, being crazy for Jesus. In that the world we see us crazy, but that's for God. And then when we are at our normal, that's for just for their sake. Your great learning is driving you crazy. See, that's the thing about the new life in God. The new life in God, the Bible talks about for God's ways ain't like our ways, not that it's not like our thoughts, in that there's a way that's higher. For the wisdom for God, we will use the foolish things of the world to shame them wise. God will use the weak things of the world to shame them strong. Verse 25 says that I am not insane, most excellent first time. Paul replied, what I'm saying is true and reasonable. What I'm saying is true and reasonable. So we are seeing people will not have space of what's true. People will not have space for what's reasonable. That's why they'll call you insane. Maybe you're praying for someone who's sick, uh, uh, who, who, who again is so old, they are destined to die, but you are still believing God, still believing in God. Uh, I usually like verse 28. It says that, then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time that you can persuade me to be a Christian. And so that's why you should tell people, you being born in a Christian family doesn't make you a Christian, it only gives you the privilege of becoming a Christian. You only become a Christian by hearing the word of God. You only become a Christian by hearing the word of truth. You only become a Christian once you get to uh, to receive this reasoning that, 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 that Paul was here telling them. And so here Agrippa was telling Paul, do you think do you think in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? So we see that people get to be persuaded to become a Christian, to be, some, to be persuaded to, to living the lifestyle of a Christian. Paul replied, short time or not, I pray to God, not only you, but all those who listen to me today may become what I am, except for their chains. So sometimes you should always, you should never underestimate the power of five minutes. Never underestimate the power of one minute. Never under, underestimate the power of six, six, 60 seconds. Or telling someone God loves you. Never underestimate it. It can make someone can convert someone to becoming a Christian that short time 
people can become like you because of the one speaking to them. So here we are seeing of the God of encounter. So also let's have let's turn our Bible to the book of to the book of Exodus. The God of encounter, the God of encounter. Once we get to encounter. Uh, here we read about Moses, the way Moses got to encounter God. In the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a frame. Who appeared to him? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in frame, in, in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses went thought I will go and see the same sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw, now the Lord, when the Lord saw that he had gone up to look, God called him from, from within the bush, Moses, Moses. So what we have, the God of encounter, the God of encounter is usually about, uh, do you want to meet this God? Do you want to encounter this God? Uh, do you have a desire of letting go of what you've been doing, of your normal, of your norm, and then desiring something new? You see, here we are seeing Moses. Moses was taking care of his father in, his, in, in law flock. And then this time around, he saw a, a bush that was fire, was, that was not being burnt up. And then he decided to go closer. And so when the Lord saw him going closer, that's when he called him Moses, Moses. Identity in encounter. In that, do, it, does it, um, do you personal? Do you want to encounter God? Do you want to encounter God? Do you want to encounter God? God who teaches men how to make profit. God who teaches men how to make profit. God who teaches men and the power of making wealth. Do you want to encounter this God? Do you want to encounter this God? Then it's usually a life of us in that desiring to get closer to Him. In the book of James says that when you um, if when we draw closer to Him, when you draw near to Him, He shall also draw near to to us. And, and then in the Bible talks about for uh, for uh, we should seek the Lord now while He may be found. And so our God of encounter in that from there we shall get our identity. Then we shall know of how God tells Him that I've come down and I want to send you. I have heard the cry of my people. I have seen their suffering, and so we are hearing of this of these wonderful things that of, of so we are hearing of how encounter and identity is in a encounter and identity. And sometimes people usually say that Paul's name was Paul's name was changed from Saul to Paul. Uh, for me, I surely feel as if uh, Paul and Saul was just the same person in that his name wasn't changed um, uh, in, in regard to whether he was going to the Gentiles or the Jewish people. And that's why he got to be called a different name. But you're seeing about encounter the name. And then our Lord Jesus Christ, when he appeared to Paul, he told Paul, I will show you how much, how much you must suffer for me. I will show you how much you must suffer for me. And then you're telling him that you go out there, tell people what you have seen and what you will see. So that is simply to each and every one of us in that I pray. is my heart desire for each and every one of us to encounter God. And that's why going for prayer cashers, going for worship experiences, going for Bible studies, going for uh, healing miracles, going for such things in that is in such places, places that you shall be or you shall, you shall like... Um, you shall like be able to encounter God. You shall be able to encounter God. And that you're like, God, I desire to see you. God, I desire to know you more. And that I want to know you better than, than I knew about you yesterday. And that having such kind of heart posture, having such kind of desire, is a thing for each and every one of us to desire. In that draw near to God, in shall draw near to you. In that the identity in encounter, identity in encounter. For each and every one of us, for each and every one of us, for each and every one of us. And this, that's my prayer and my heart is for each and every one of us. Let us encounter God so we can have an identity in Him, so we can have an identity, a family rooted in Him, and that you'll be doing business and then it'll be like, I know, identity in encounter, encountering God who is, who when you give your tithe, then God will open doors for you and then will open the floodgates of, then you'll open the, the windows, it talks about the windows of heaven. And then you shall, I shall put you into test. You shall ask for anything. Shall give unto you. Then your business will be growing, growing, growing. Then it'll be like telling people ever since I, I um, you encounter the God who is faithful to those of whom give that tithing. And so encounter is usually in different dimensions, different areas of your life. Go, encounter the God of feeling, the God of breakthrough, the God of uh, the way maker. In that when you encounter God, then that you shall find identity. Then you shall be found standing before people, telling people, if only you knew where I came from. You should have been there when I came through. The church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. Another song that we, uh, we sang in a crusade in Akuru. And I should say that you should have been there when I came through. The church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Holy Ghost uh, moving all around me. <laughs> in that people, in that we stand before people telling that you should have been there when I came through. And so I pray for each and every one of us in that let you go through. 
in that in that it's not a matter of what you're going through i've forgotten all that phrase what you're going towards going through and so god have a counter in identity so shalom shalom till next time may god bless you and keep you